It's all right. Let's let's start the plan. Let's share our screen. Let's share our slides. I will start from there. Hope you can see my slide. So today we are in the training for business analysis and in the foundation class. So we'll start by introducing what business based analysis really is. Business analysis is a set of tasks the no, set of tasks and techniques used to work as a license among stakeholders can you hear me So, this analysis to say the set of parts and techniques used to work as a lesson among stakeholders in order to understand the structure and operations of an organization and to recommend solutions that enable the organization to achieve its goals. So here we are trying to introduce the subject business analysis role. So talk about business analysis. We all know what business is and the English meaning for analysis. So we'll talk about analysis. Analysis are talking about breaking down a complex entity into smaller form to bring up an insight from it, to get an understanding, to get the foundation of the matter. So now business analysis is just like breaking down just like a set of techniques the tasks we use to break down the a particular business um objectives and goals down to a, to a smaller entity of which we will get to understand to bring up the need for the organization to understand the solutions and every other concept we need to understand in the organization in order to to, to get a result. So this analysis is all about producing results. The, the major aim is to produce results, bring about, among, about growth in an organization. So now, as we are here to study business analysis, we should understand that before we go ahead, we should understand that what we are here to understand is the facts and the techniques and all the key things we need to understand on how to work with stakeholders of organizations and to bring about the growth of that organization. So in all these things, what we need to look into the structure, the policies, and the operations of that organizations, thereby understanding the needs and the problems and recommending solutions to enable the goal, the organization achieve their purpose, their visions, their goals, objectives. So now who is a business analyst? For our slide, you said a business analysis is, analyst, is any person who performs business analysis activities. They are also known as business operations analysts. So once you you undergone this training, get trained, understand the concepts, and begin to practice this analysis, you are automatically a business analyst because you are performing the functions of business analyst. You are helping organizations achieve their their goals, helping them get results, helping them get solutions to their needs. I hope you understand it. So automatically you become a business analyst as long as you perform the tasks 
in business analysis, which we will get to understand in due in the course of our study. So now, why do we use business analysis? Why is it important in organizations? Why is it important in why is it important for us to study business analysis? And what we said it helps you to understand the structure and the dynamics of the company. You know, companies need business analysts for them to achieve their results because of the core functions of business, of business analysts and the aim of business analysis in, the, in their growth. We say it helps us, it helps the company to understand the structure and values of the company. You know, when you're in, as a business analyst, or as a business operation analyst to, to in order for us to help the organizations get their uh, achieve their vision we have to use the the we have to understand business analysis and use our core factors to bring in solutions to the businesses so now it helps you to understand the structure and the dynamics of this of the, of the company so every company have their structure, have how they are being built, have what the objective they are chasing, have the 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 vision, the goals. So with this analysis, you are able to understand properly before you bring in any solution to them to understand the structure. We will we'll get to understand these key key concepts as we study along that we will use in the course of our of our operations as business analysts. But it allows you to understand current problems in, in, in the target organizations. One thing about this analysis is that most of their concepts works together. It's not what you understand some part and leave some part, because you see that they have a way of working together. I believe you're understanding me. That a way of working together. You cannot understand the solution without knowing how to how to get the need of the organization. You cannot understand the need of the organization without knowing how to get the the, the context of which the, the, the needs are built on. So they are in that they, they in a way they have a way of working together. So now as we so they are long, we'll get to understand the processes which we will use to understand the structure and the dynamics of companies and to understand the problem because you must under, the first thing you do, you must understand the need of the company before you are able to provide a solution for them. So it helps you to identify improvement potentials and recommending solutions to enable an organization to achieve its goals. It helps you to identify and articulate the need for change. It maximizes the value delivered by an organization to its stakeholders. So now, with this six points, I think we'll have a brief understanding of why we use business analysis to provide solutions or to grow companies and organizations. Why the organization need to hire a business analyst to grow. So now, there is, we have a body of knowledge that we every business analyst gets information from or direct the activities and the functions of the business analyst. We call it business analysis book of knowledge. Just like in project management, you have project management book of knowledge. This we have business analysis body of knowledge. Sorry, so we call it the BA book guide. Presently, we have the volume, the version three of it now in circulation. So after the training or in the course of the training, it's proper you, you go to your internet, browse through and see how you can, if it's possible to download it from the internet, or we'll tell you how you go about it. Because as a business analyst, you need to have the business analysis body of knowledge. It's a book. It's a book. You have it in an electronic form. We also can get it in a, in, in a hard copy. So in this book, it contains all the necessary information that we need to know in the practice of business analysis. That's why it has been called body of knowledge. So this, this um, BA book 
is a globally recognized standard for the practice of business analysis. This guide describes business analysis areas of knowledge, their associated activities and tasks, and the skills necessary to be effective in their execution. So when you get this book, you go through it, you will get to understand how you, and what you need to be equipped with to practice business analysis. It gives you a guide. It gives you the, the areas you need to understand, you need to know, the skills you need to have, the activities you need to do. Although in business analysis, we, we are not streamlined to a particular system or a, or a particular set of activities you, you must use to achieve your, your, your solution. No, but it gives you a guide. It gives a list of activities that you need to learn, you need to know, you need to understand. So you use it in the practice as a business mm -hmm. analyst. So as a business analyst, without the knowledge of this BA book, I think you'll find it difficult in practicing business analysis because I think when you come across any business and analyst that doesn't have an information or, or know anything about BA book, I think the person's knowledge will be questioned because it's globally recognized as a tool that every business analyst, analyst needs to have. You need to have it handy until you get to understand it properly on the practice of business analysis. So I, I believe you are understanding. I believe we are getting it. With time, we'll have time to ask questions. All what we are studying today, we will see them in the business analysis body of knowledge. So it's important that we all go to look for it, get it, study it, understand it, and begin to work with it because you will need it in the course of your practice as business analyst. So, um, Okay, so with our little introduction to business analysis, get to understand that these are set of tasks, set of activities that if that we put in practice to provide solution to organizations, to help them grow, help them achieve aims, help them achieve vision. Because your sole, for the sole purpose of a business analyst in every organization is not to operate it's not to work as a, it's to, to operate the organization's machines or their machinery lines or whatever, no. Our operations is mainly to bring, to identify need and to provide solution. That is the sole aim that we are handling in every organization. Identifying needs and providing solutions to those needs. So, now, we'll look into the key concepts in business analysis. So when I talk about key concepts, I'm talking about the ideas and terms that, I, that are central to the main point of study. They are referring to terms used in the process of business analysis. So now, when we talk about the key concept of business analysis, they are talking about the the major areas or ideas that need that we need to put concentration in, in the, in the whole process of business analysis. That's the, the, the major terms, the major ideas that is being used in this process. Look at, we have six major key concepts in the practice of business analysis. We have the, context, we have the context, we have the need, we have the value, we have the change, we have the stakeholders, we have the solution. And these key concepts, cannot work without each other. It's not what you say, I understand the need, but I, don't, I didn't understand 
the change. I don't understand the stakeholder. I don't understand the solutions or the value provided. These six concepts, we must have to understand them in order for us to provide, to support the organizational growth. So, So the first, we'll start by understanding what the term, when the term need is in business analysis. Because the first thing as a business analyst that we look at for in the practice of business analysis is need. There must be a need that we are looking out, that we want to use to convert, to produce, or to provide Growth. So, there must be a need. So, the first thing we do in this analysis, once we, come, once we get into, once we are hired, maybe on a contract basis or fully employed in the organization, the first thing we look out for is a need. The needs. What needs does the organization need to settle? What, what, what are they passing through? You need to understand the need first before we go to look into other key concepts like the stakeholders, the solution, the change, the context, and the value. Those six concepts must be understood properly because they work with each other. You cannot understand one and let go of the other. So business analysis, as we all know from our all our introduction in a nutshell we we'll also we'll just come to understand that it is a research program it's a research activity what are we searching out for the need that we need to solve the need of the stakeholders the solution we need to we need to bring into it the value we need to provide what change are we are we bringing in we need to understand them properly because in a nutshell, it's all about a research, it's all about research activity that we're into. Struggling to find, to, to bring out solutions, struggling to make sure that the organizations grow, the organization grow. That's the reason why they are hiring us as business analysts, because they want to grow their organization. And this growth can come in different ways based on the type of organization. Some want to grow in their sales, so want to have a, want to develop policies that will help them in growth. So want to improve in their processes, their operational processes, and diverse needs that different organizations will always want to go after to hire a business analyst. So you, as a business analyst, coming into the picture of the organization, it's your duty to work with these key concepts to bring about this change, bring about a solution, to develop, to bring about a value for the organization. So that is the major purpose of we as business analysts. We are solution providers. Now, before we look into this key concept, the we have three, I let me say, other different methods of achieving this purpose. But we we'll look into three key or three major methods we use in business analysis. We have a descriptive analysis. As a business analyst, when you come into an organization, what we do with descriptive analysis, it helps us to understand the history the historical data that the organization have. You go in there, you get their data, get their information, their historical information, put them together, the trends. For example, if you are looking into sales, maybe the, the company wants to grow their sales, they have issues with their sales, you come to understand that. You come in there, you look into that historical trend of sales. This will help you to understand the need. When you look into their historical data, the the um, the data that 
the company has generated with time. The trend, how it goes, okay, January, February, March, look at the trend of, of sales. As we're talking about sales for, for, for now, the trend. Or look at talking talk about the, the process management. Look at you look at uh, uh, you look into the trends, historical trend on how it has been going in the organization. We call it descriptive because you use this to describe what you are looking at for. Understand? So after understand after the understanding of this need, we have to predict a change. So we call it the predictive analysis. Now, in this course of predictive analysis, we look at this has to give us the ability to predict the future using the trend, using the history. On describing this, we get the history of, of the organization sales, their processes, the operations. So with that, we, should, we will be able to predict the future outcomes of the organization. That's what we call predictive analysis. We'll get to understand this in practical terms. The predictive analysis, how we can use this historical trend to predict the future outcome of the organization. Before we now have the prescriptive analysis. Now, this prescriptive analysis is just like go to the hospital, doctor take it, check your history. That's one of the things doctor do, check your history, listen to you talk, then prescribe medications that will help you with your health. So now, we also have what we call the prescriptive analysis. Now, we have understood the descriptive analysis. We have been able, we will be able to understand the descriptive analysis. And with that historical trend, we are able to predict what the outcome, the future outcome will, will be. And now we have to, at this analysis, prescribe solutions that will attack the future needs. Because in the course of our predictive analysis, we're able to understand the need of the organization, the need of the stakeholders. No, we have different stakeholders in every organization, the need of each stakeholder. And we'll be able to prescribe a solution or to bring in or to determine a solution that which will help the determined outcome that we are looking out to. So in the course of this analysis, we have descriptive analysis where we, are, where we study the trends of history. We have the predictive analysis. The, these are methods we use to predict future outcomes. And we have the prescriptive analysis. Those are the methods we use to, uh, to prescribe solutions to organizations, to stakeholders, to provide value to the stakeholders. So, to provide value to the stakeholders, these three are very important methods that we understand in the course of our practical activities as business analysts. We are also looking at the foundation, the theoretical understanding of these. We also get to understand the, the practical understanding of this, how we can practicalize these analytical methods to provide growth, value to organizations that hire us in the course of our work as business analysts. So now let's go into the key concept as we have got to understand the, the method that we use in this analysis, how we get the descriptive analysis, how we get about the predictive analysis and also the, the prescriptive analysis, which we'll get to another the particles later. So we're going into the key concept of business analysis. So now, one of, I said we'll start by studying the need by studying the need the the need in a key concept yeah so 
we say a need is a problem or, or, an, or opportunity to be addressed. A problem or opportunity to be addressed. Most times when we hear the word need in the English concept, most of what comes to our mind is a problem. Yes, but in business analysis, what comes to our mind is not only a problem, but also an opportunity because you help organizations identify a problem that needs a solution and also identify an opportunity that they need to um they need to go after you also have them identify an opportunity have them identify not just a problem but also an opportunity to what to be addressed to go after because sometimes there may be a problem in the organization that needs to be solved that the solution need to need to need to to be solved to provide a better future outcome. Sometimes it's not just a problem, but also an opportunity that we need to go after. So now, so so a problem. So when we talk about a problem in an organization. We look into who really has this problem. Which of the stakeholders? Where do we need to look? You know, let's talk about stakeholders. We look, we have both the internal and the external. So who really has this problem that we are, that, that we are planning to, that we are bringing in a solution for? So this will help us to be able to educate the stakeholders in this key need and bring about a solution. So, so until, a pro, uh, until the need is identified, the solution cannot be rendered. So we need to get to understand properly a problem, the problem the organization wants to solve, or the opportunity they wants to grab. So to help us to provide a solution to them. So now, after identifying the need of the organization, the next thing we'll, we'll look into is the change we want to bring in. We'll say the change is an act of transformation in response to a need. Now we have identified a need. What change are we bringing in? Or what change are we bringing into the organization to, 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 to assist in solving the need that we have identified? But we remember, I said earlier, that we only help in the, in the operations. Just like, for example, now, um, we don't work like how I say. We don't. We are not operators of machinery. But rather, we help in the in, in raising processes in the operations of these organizations. We help them raise processes. We help them bring a change in their process, a change in the in different aspect of the organization, just to tackle that need that we have identified as a loophole or that opportunity. That we have identified that we need to grab for that company. So the sole aim of we in that organization is to bring about a growth for that organization, a change, a growth, a growth pattern for the organization. So now, so as I said, one of the primary aim of this analysis is to provide a change, to provide a solution to bring in value to the organization. These six concepts work with each other. They interwove themselves. You cannot talk about change without, first of all, understanding, understanding the need. You cannot talk about the need without understanding the stakeholders that, that through which you will, will identify this need, either external or the internal stakeholders. You cannot talk about 
the solution without talking about the value that we provide. Not talking about the value, not talking about the context. So these six things, they work hand in hand again to produce to produce a result for the organization. For, for the organization growth. So now as a best analyst, it is your responsibility or your duty to what enforce change after the needs identified to enforce change. So now we help the organization prepare for change, we help them provoke change, help them prevent change. Because there are some changes that need to be prevented. Just like I said earlier, the method of this analysis. We have, after we study the historical trends, most times there will be some change you understand in the course of what? Predictive analysis that we need to tackle. We need to prevent. This change should not come to be. It's not every change that is welcome in organization. In the course of our work in the area of predictive analysis, predicting what the future trend of, of this company is, of this organization is, predicting it. In the course of prediction, there are some change that you identify that we need to be prevented. So in the course of enforcing change, it will, this analysis support us or help us to prepare for future change help us to enforce the change, the positive ones, and to help us to prevent negative things as that is coming in. So now, so now, this, when you identify a need, I'm going to, understand, to get to understand the change that we need to bring in. In the course of our descriptive analysis, we understand a need, and we come to understand the change that we need to bring in into the organization. Now, we need to understand who are the people that this change is to be affected on. We need to understand the stakeholders that need to, that this change will affect. We need to understand the, the, the people that care about this change. Need to understand diverse information around this change that we are bringing in. It will help us prepare for this change. Example, in the course of, of, of our descriptive analysis, if we get to understand that this is a negative change coming, we will raise up a fence in the course of preparing for this change when it's a negative change. But if a positive change that is coming that, that we are bringing into the organization, we, in the course of our descriptive analysis, we will have to prepare ourselves to embrace this change. That is through bringing through a change of process, change of policies, and all those other different business analytical terms. We need to get ourselves prepared, get, get the organization prepared, get the company safeguarded. That is part of what we understand because of our practical in, on how to what, attend to change, how to prepare for this change, and how to provoke this change. When we we'll get to see, when, 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 when we we'll get to understand the positive change you are bringing to the organization, we we'll get to understand how to provoke this change, how to enforce this change, how to bring it into in reality, how to make sure that the organizations align themselves to this change. And when it comes to when it comes to be a change that needs to be prevented, it's also our responsibility to to do what to prepare the organization in, to prevent that change from coming in. Remember, we our descriptive analysis. Here we look at trends which we use to do what to predict. Once you understand that this change through our prediction, we need to do what prevent it. Also, our responsibility as, as this analyst to safeguard the organization because what they are expecting from us as business analysts is nothing but what 
growth. Nothing more but growth. If not for growth, if not for increase or positive change, they won't hire you as a business analyst. So we help them to what? To prepare for this change. We help them to enforce this change. I also help them to prevent negative change that we foresaw in the course of our work, of our studying of the history of the history of the, the trend history. You get it. So I believe we are understanding. We we'll have time to ask questions and get better understanding. So now we we'll look about stakeholders. Talk about stakeholders. We say that a group of group or individuals who is re related to change, need, or solution. Stakeholders are often defined in terms of interest, impact, or influence over the change. We don't talk about stakeholders. The first thing that comes to our mind is influence and interest. Influence and interest. So the influence and interest. Stakeholders in an organization, once you come as a business analyst, it's your responsibility to identify who are the stakeholders. You have the internal stakeholders, you have the external stakeholders. Who are the stakeholders that this change is affecting? For example, the, the, the internal stakeholders look at the management and the external for like the, that's the clients, the customers, people that this solution we are bringing in, this value is affecting. They are also part of the stakeholders because in the course of this analysis, we don't only look internally, you also look externally. This change you are bringing in, who are the people that this change will also affect externally? Who are they? You have to understand them. And by understanding this, the external stakeholders of the organization, you understand the through there, you understand the need. As I said earlier, that they work together. You understand the need that this, this stakeholders need, their need, their problems, the opportunities. You understand the kind of change you want to bring in to these stakeholders. You know, these stakeholders are talking about one change may affect may be useful or valuable to a particular stakeholder and not be to, to the other stakeholder. This change they are bringing in, some may embrace it. It may be useful to this and not useful to this. It may be valuable to and not valuable to this. It is our responsibility to identify stakeholders, identify their needs, and come to understand this change they are bringing in, the solutions we are rendering. Because every stakeholder, one thing we know about them is their interest and their influence over the organization. So through the understanding of the interest and the influence of these stakeholders, understand their needs, understand the change they are bringing in, the kind of solution we are providing to, to enhance growth, increase in that organization. So the value, so now we look into value. Now, from here, we say that intangible gains, intangible gains indirectly benefit or direct benefit to the, of the solution. Now, value, we're talking about the gains, the intangible gains you are bringing to the, the organization because this analysis is all about bringing value to an organization. You have been hired, you come in, you do your analysis so you, using the diverse methods we have, but the one that you get to understand better, you work out your analysis, get to understand and the, the kind of value you want to provide. So now, this intangible gain that the organization benefited from you, these are the value that the organizations are achieving. So the context deals with the circumstances of the change. So when you talk about context, most of us look at the environment, the, the, we talk about the environment, which 
encompasses this change. Everything that is relevant to bring in change, but not in this change itself. All the relevant environmental factors that encompasses this change that brings about that is useful or, or the underlying foundations for all, for this change we are talking about. So this context is so wide that it includes so many things. It can be attitudes, it can be characters, it can be competitors, it can be cultures, it can be demographics, it can be government policies. All the context on which this change is embedded on, on which this change rely on, but not the change itself. All the context, it can be anything that's so wide. Processes, policies, government policies. So all these foundations, these embedded foundations of which this change is embedded on is the context. So now the change, the need, the solution, the stakeholders, the value, the context, these 16 works together. They interwoven the same particular result. If you look at this slide now, I don't I believe you can see my slide. Look at this slide now, you get to understand that you get to see. Look at this slide now, you get to see the six, the six core values that we're just looking to now and how they interwoven themselves. Look at change. Look at cost and prevent. Now, this change affects stakeholders. This change also affects the need, has to do with the solution, has to do with the context, has to do with the value. The solution also have its own, they interwoven themselves. So this six must be properly understood clearly before we can talk about understanding or or uh, um, the key concept of this analysis. It's not where you say you understand the change and don't understand the solution. The foundational aspect of this needs to be understood properly. Now, from this, our slide now, understand that this change goes in response to what? To, this, to the context. Also, implement what, it brings about implementation of what solutions. Goes about to increase value to the stakeholders, because the stakeholders, we talk about influence and interest. That's all they're after. We cannot talk about stakeholders, that's influence and interest. The, the, the stakeholders influence and take stakeholders with interest in the matter. So now, change brings about what increase in the, what, in the value for the stakeholders. Providing solutions to the needs of the stakeholder, satisfying the, the, the cost, the need. Also, what implementing solutions, going to response to context. We talk about context, we talk about earlier, we say they have diverse, we talk about attitude, we talk about government policies, we talk about uh, processes, we talk about uh, demographics. Different things can stand as context in an organization. So this change also what go in response to, to government policy. There are sometimes some solutions need to be, some solutions need to be on organizations. When you get to understand that the need of the organization has to do with the present policy of the government affecting the organization. There can be a change in policy that will bring a negative effect on the organization. So now it's a based analysis, you need to go around it. As you come to understand that the need, one of the needs is what? One of the problems, one of the needs of the organization is what? Government policy. So you as a business analyst, it's your responsibility to go around it. But this is a solution, a change that will still, despite the government policy, still bring about growth in the organization. Because before you have been hired, the company have come to understand, that the organization have come to understand that men, we need a solution to a particular matter. They may not even understand their problems, but they know that, yeah, there is a decrease in sales. 
a decrease in growth. Our processes are not functioning well. Now we need an external analyst to come into the system to help us identify what really is the cause, what really is the problem, what opportunity we really need to embrace. So you come in as a business analyst, understudy the company, get to understand their needs, and get to understand the context under which this need is embedded on. If you come to understand, for example, get to understand that this is what's affecting this company is what the government, the present government policy is affecting the sales, affecting the growth, affecting the processes, affecting the outcome of this organization. It is your responsibility to work around it, to provide a solution, bring about a change in response to this context. What can we do differently? What can we bring in? What can we stop doing? What can we do? What can we stop doing? So through this, you get to understand how you can go around this, this policy and still produce a, a result. It can come to be processes, oh, which will not require a change. You go around it, get to understand what can you do differently uh, to bring about the growth of this organization, despite this context, despite the policy, despite the process or whatever, going around it to put a solution, bring a result. That is what the company is after. With the stakeholders at heart, the interest and the influence of stakeholders at heart, producing a result with the stakeholders at heart. So now, because this solution is to the needs of the stakeholders. So you see how change in how change affects all. Through change, you, what are you looking after? Bringing in value to the stakeholders, bringing a solution to the stakeholders, satisfying the needs, the costs, and implementing the solutions, thinking about um, going in response to the context, response to the context, to the need, increasing value or decreasing, depending on what the need. Understand? Uh, when you come to the case of the need, you see now that you have, when you come to the, the, to the area of the need, how the need affects the change, affects stakeholders, affects value, affects solution, affects content. You see that this need is attended to through what? A change. You can't talk about need in the course of this, this analysis, not talking about a change. So it's attended to through, it's implemented through what? A change. Satisfied by what? The solution that is being brought into. Now, why do we identify, how do you identify the need? You want to satisfy or want to uh, motivate the stakeholders. Example, we're talking about the external stakeholders. The external uh, stakeholders, maybe in a company that is into, let's say, um, uh, let's say the banking sector, for example. Let's talk about the banking sector, for example. Yeah, maybe I want to increase sales, account opening. Want to increase sales, want to increase account opening. Want to grow our the volumes, the, the, the portfolios of the bank. Now, you know, first of all, you do you understand the who are the stakeholders, who are this thing affected externally. Now, you have to generate work. So now this need has a lot to do with this, the stakeholders. So now we talk about this, the, the, the stakeholders. Also see how it affects the change, how it affects the value. For the stakeholders to participate in this change, they also have to use the solution that is being provided by the business analyst. Also have to have to do what to motivate. These stakeholders are also motivated by what? The reward that comes from the value. They are also motivated by the reward that comes from the value. Now, when we, when we talk about the value, look into what how it affects also the change by increasing what or decreasing by increasing or decreasing the change, also motivates the stakeholders, also uh, uh, 
uh, high is the, the, the value is being delivered by what? By solution and quantified by uh, or qualified by what? The needs of the organizations and also measured by the context and all this. So these six, these six uh, key concepts work together. Talk about the context. You said this, you come to understand how it sets limits on the change. For example, I talk about government policies, talk about attitudes. How, for example, let's work with government policies, with policies, how government policies brings limits to change. How it's related to the solution, how, it's in, how it influences the needs, how it, it, it affects the stakeholders, the limit it sets on the value. Get to understand this through which the understanding of this context of the government policies, how the government policies affect the change, how it's uh, what the relationship it has with the solution you are providing because we must have it at heart. Maybe the government bring a policy that uh, so and so and so and so, a particular policy come, coming into play. Now, the solution we are bringing in, it must be in relationship with this policy because we will not go against government policies in the course of our life. We are responsible people. So how does this, this government policy relate to the solution we are bringing? How does it affect the change you are bringing? What, what limit does the change has on this? What value, how does it relate to the value, the measure that this has on the value you are providing? The measure that this policy has on the value you are providing? How it motivates the, how will this value, how will the context also have, what perspective it has with the stakeholders? So we get to understand that these systems, they work with themselves. They work with themselves. We know how context can have influence on need. So it's a it's a broad it's a broad a broad concept that needs to be properly understood because we need these six things to provide a proper business analysis. We need to bring out a, a proper report of a business analyst. You need to understand all this properly. Because even this context has what? Influence over the need, over the problem. Government can bring up a policy that will be an open door opportunity for the organization. So it also has, also has its own influence on the need. Of the organization. So all this comes in response with one another. We have to understand how the change affects, how the need affects the change, how the change affects the solution, how does it affect the, the context, the value, the stakeholders, what is the motivation of the stakeholders, what is the general influence that this core concept is bringing into the organization. So, yeah, yeah, I just use the, the photo to see how they easy to describe this key concept, the change, the two legs, solution and the need. The head has to do with the change. Two legs, solution and the need. The two legs behind. The, the two hands in front, the need and the solution. The two legs behind, the stakeholders, and the context, and also the value at the back. Just trying to see how we can use it to describe the six concepts, major and key concepts in the course of our study.
So, so um, I don't know if we are allowed to ask questions. Have any question? And on mute and ask. So we go ahead. If you have any question, you can raise your hands and ask your question. Or we should go ahead. So, so the what we're looking at to today, I'm just trying to see how I can make us understand. The I don't really want us to do so 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 much today, so that we will get to understand it properly. I'm going to ask if there's any question. So because these six concepts are very very necessary in the in what we'll to be doing. In, in future and also for business only. So okay now I have some common business analysis techniques that has been used in identifying are you working with this key concept you know we we'll talk about the key concept here we we'll talk about the context the stakeholder the solution need value and change now we'll talk about how we use this to analyze and to bring about um, to bring about growth and increase in organization which is a sole aim of which affects the organization organization uh, performances which is the sole aim of why we are being hired so now we have some also some techniques which we use in the course of identifying it and then bringing up solutions and change in the organization so most common most times although we have several several techniques over 50 techniques so there's no one that is really really that, that will say is a must. You must follow this or must follow that. No, as a business analyst, you get together your, your technique that is suitable to you and to your function. As a business analyst, you get to understand, you have to, you have to generate your own technique. Because from our business analysis body of knowledge, we have over 50 techniques that is being used in the process of business analysis understanding needs, bringing in change, solutions, value, understanding context. But we'll look at some common ones that is most used by, by this analyst. Most times they use what we call most, SWOT, MOSCO, which are abbreviations, which are abbreviations of Set of tasks that are being used as techniques. We'll talk about the the MOST, the full meaning of this is M stand for the mission, O the objective, S the strategy, Z the 
the tactics. So it allows business analysts to perform thorough internal analysis of what is the aim of an organization to achieve and how to tackle such issues. When you come in, when you come in as an external business analyst, every organization has what is being built on, has a vision they are chasing, has a mission and a strategy which they want to achieve their visions and missions and objectives. So you just cannot come into an organization and just start functioning, start understanding the bedrock of which this organization is built on. That's why MOST is one of the most common techniques used by business analysts to understand needs and to enforce change and enforce uh, and to bring in solutions and value to the stakeholders. So the mission, when you come in, you will, we are if we chose to use the MOST technique, that will first of all understand properly the mission of the organization. Get to understand their mission get to understand their objective, understand what they are chasing, what the world vision they are looking out for, what strategy they, would, they have put down they want to use to achieve their objectives and goals. Because we are solution providers, we are goal getters. So we look at all this. get to understand their missions, their objectives, their strategies, and the technique they have set down on ground, the tactics they have set down on ground they want to use to achieve their purpose. So through the understanding of this, through the understanding of this, it gives us a better internal understanding of the organization. That's what we use for, to get to do the internal analysis, the understand what on what foundation this organization is lying on, what are they really chasing. For example, when you come into the internal organization, you hear their vision statement or their objectives. You hear their mission. You get to sit to understand what they are, what they are known for, or what they want to be known for, or what they are chasing, what they are coming after. It gives you, make you give an insight. And now, why are they not achieving this? This is what they want to achieve. Then why are they not achieving this? It gives you an insight of what the internal needs are. It gives you an internal analysis. Okay, what is the problem internally that is stopping them from achieving this? Because you, as an as a business analyst, is there to understand needs and provide solutions and bring value. That is in to the stakeholders' interest. So you get to understand who. Get to understand what is the internal need of this organization. What are they lacking? What are they not doing properly? It can it, it may be their processes, their managerial processes, their operational processes, their attitudes. You get to understand the internal need of the organization. That's why we use the mission objective, the MOST technique. To understand the intent to, to do the internal analysis of this organization. With this, you understand what the organization wants to achieve, how they plan to achieve it. Most times, the problem of the, of the organization may even be internal. Maybe their processes doesn't align with what they are chasing. So you bring in change to help them achieve that goal. So that is the understanding of the process we call MOST technique in internal analysis of organization. So I talk about the P, another common one is the SWOT. I know most of us are used to SWOT. 
That's the strengths, the weakness, the opportunities, and the threats. This technique helps you to find areas of both strengths and weaknesses. It also allows for the proper allocation of resources. Now, when you come to bringing change into an organization, you need to understand where the organizations, where their strength lies, where their weaknesses lie, their threats and their opportunities. So it will help you to understand how to allocate resources, time, how to allocate uh, which area needs more attention, which area needs to be, needs, uh, more resources, maybe time or whatever. It gives you an idea. It gives you an idea of the company strength, the company weakness, the opportunity the company has, and the threats the company has. What is threatening the, the business of this company? It gives you an idea of it through the proper analysis of the strength of the organization, proper analysis of the weakness, the opportunities and the threats. You come to understand how to allocate resources, the priorities of allocations, the priorities of attention. In the course of our practicals, I think we'll get to understand how to do these activities better how to understand the strengths, how to understand the weakness of organizations, the opportunities and the threat. This is a very, very common technique that business analysis analysts use in the course of their duties. Now, we must find the sum of squares total So now, another very common uh, um, technique again is the MOS COW technique. Must or should MOS. Could or would COW process. That's the meaning of the most count. This technique allows prioritizations of requirements by presenting a framework in which every individual requirement should be evaluated, elevated to the other. So now, it helps you understand.
business analysis class. Where is, that? Where is your trainer? What happened? You said what? He just disappeared. He disappeared. Maybe okay. Maybe he had the issue with his network. Okay. I think so. Yeah, let's go down, please. Thank yeah. you. Uh,
Not just sleep, I'm sorry, the network glitch just affected me. I've been trying to come in back, but finding it difficult. Thank God I'm back. So let's conclude our class for today. So let's complete the class today for today and I work on my network. I don't know what's happening to the network. So as, as I was saying, the, the sole aim of a business analyst to bring in team, to bring in solution, to bring in value to an organization. So this one is expected. The organization is expected to see the value they have brought into the organization. So if you, you, you are expected to, to derive a technique that is useful to you, just like how I listed some common techniques that we use to identify to, to work, which most people use, but it's still open to individual decisions. There's no particular technique that you say this is a standard technique used in business analysis. No, that over is over 50 of them. So we'll not come up and say okay, you must use the mission objective strategy. So no, 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 no. You can start to go with brainstorming with your group. You brainstorm over the you brainstorm and break out solutions to the organizations as long as. The organization is experiencing growth, the organization is experiencing increase, their, their needs are, are, are identified, their needs are well defined, the influence of the needs is well, is, is well defined, and the change is well defined, solution is, is, is to, the, to the need is brought in, value is being seen, the stakeholders are benefiting from it. The, the interests of the stakeholders at heart, the external and internal stakeholders, the, 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 the solution and the value brought in with regard to this, the, with the vision of the organization at heart. Because whatever you're bringing in, you must put in the vision and the object, objective that the business is chasing at heart in raising up what a solution to the organization. So in the, in the course of your practice as a business analyst, you will bring up or choose any of this technique or bring up your own technique that will help you to the understanding of both the external and the internal factors, understanding and analyzing the external and internal factors in, about bringing about a change to the organization, either increasing it, in, either increase or decrease, depending on what that need is. That's some positive and some negative change and need. Some needs, some change will bring about increase in a particular stuff, or bring about decrease. So the so the main aim is that. A need is identified, the context is understood, solution is brought in, the value is being I don't know if it can. okay, the value is brought in, and the stakeholders have been influenced by the value that comes in as a result of your analysis. 
So I think we'll take a break here. But my next class will be more extensive and uh, work on our next one before then. I don't know how the network is struggling over here. So do you have any question? No question from anybody. So I should believe you understood the basic concept of business analysis. Okay. Oh, yeah. Please, can I hear your question? Yeah. Oh, yeah, with you, please. Can you unmute? Good day, sir. Yeah, good day. Yeah, it um that hands up was just a mistake. I, I don't have any questions, sir. Thanks. Okay. okay, so I believe you understand the key concept of data analysis. Yes, I do. I do. Yeah. Thank you, sir. Okay. So end the class here. We'll continue from next week. And by that time, I think we will have a better network, and but I don't know why the network today was just, just troubling me. Okay. Only only Vinny concept. Your hand is up. Yeah. <clears throat> good um. Good morning. Yeah. Good morning, sir. Sorry to. I, I actually I came in a bit. Not even a bit. I think I came into the to the class late. I okay. don't know if this thing was, rec um, the class was recorded or for us to be able to like go back to it. We actually met that, I met, I met it from the most uh, concept, as to concept. So I don't know if the... Yeah, this class, the class is being recorded. It's being recorded. Okay. Yeah. We can go okay. back to it and get, and if you have any questions, all right. Uchechi Jeremiah. Okay. Yeah, I'm with you. Okay, thank you, Living uh, Concept. I'm good with morning. You. Good morning. Good morning. Yeah, okay, so I uh, just wanted to ask, is there any, any software we have to download so as to get ready for next class? Yeah, for now, no. For now, no, no. no. Okay. No software. Although, yeah, with time, you understand... We'll introduce you to some tools which you need to work with, but for now, we don't have any particular software we'll take to download in this class. Oh, oh. But in the course of it, where is, we'll let you know. Thank you, Richard. All right, thank you. Yeah. Oh, okay. So, so I believe we are in line. Okay, okay. So thank you very much for the class for today. Thank you for the class for today. By next Saturday, by, God, by God's grace, we will still converge again. I think we'll have a better session. Have a better session next time. So in the course of in, in the in, in the course of the week, you can also do your own study. If you have any question, by next week you can still ask. I think the better we work with, with that, you can ask the questions and get better clarifications and better way of handling it. Although we still have some practical sessions where we'll give assignments and projects to, and we'll come to attend to it together and we'll get better understanding of what we are chasing. So thank you very much for, the, for today's class. See you next week. Thank you, so sir. Thank you, Are we sir. starting with six thinking uh, yes, next week?